Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for some gruel dinosaurs. That's right, we got green red dinos going to be playing this. We're making a couple of changes since the last time that we've been playing this deck, which we've been having some good success with. Uh, basically, we're taking the Planeswalkers out. That's what uh, we're going to be doing here. Uh, we're taking out the two Domri raids and the two from the main for some uh, Brontodons and the two Vivians from the sideboard for another Spellbreaker and another Lava Coil there. So we are going to be pretty aggressive here. We don't have the card advantage that we may have had otherwise but that's okay we are just you know going to be trying to curve out with our dinosaurs use commune with dinosaurs to find the particular ones that we that we need and that's what we're going to be uh doing this here so we'll be uh trying that out so we have another donation deck here with the girl dinos and let's see how we do Gruel Dinos. All right, so we don't have red mana, but that's what Commune with Dinosaurs is going to be doing for us. That is true, this is not rampaging music. Hey, fur bear. Welcome to the channel. Alright, Jelly, you just tried you ordered a pair of me undies. Thank you so much. Do you mind sending me your order number over there and I'll uh, get you written down as well? Ah. Uh, I did not move Simic Elves from 4-0 to 5-0. Lightning Strike upstairs. This is just a burn deck. It is not a... It's not like a, a Drake deck that started on red, red, red there. Thank you, Jelly. Yeah, I thought the the cards we switched out felt pretty good, Hogs. Um, yeah, I thought I thought the I thought the Bant Familiar list felt pretty good. It is up on on YouTube. Maybe you can see like the very ending of the the video see if there's anything else I said about it I I feel like there was something that I wanted to change maybe I don't I don't quite remember I feel like there was something with the deck maybe not actually I think it just I think it worked pretty well yeah fight with fire is different hey what's up boot it's going awesome Divination? That's not going to save you. Alright, so we had... Gatsby... And... Rx Jelly. Make sure I spell that correctly. Okay, there we go. So they have some burn spells and divination. Does that mean I change anything? It's certainly, certainly possible they don't need shock, but it's also possible that they could have like 
This could be like a wizard deck where they're playing uh, things like that that three mana haste wizard that Adelie's. Like they could be playing like this could be like an Adelie's kind of deck. I uh, don't want Cinder Vines. I think Spellbreaker is like the one card that considering bringing in uh, for like removal, just just bringing in Spellbreaker. But we don't know too much about their deck. I don't. I think I'd rather have Spellbreaker than Scavenger against a Shock deck. Maybe the Spellbreaker instead of the Stomp and keep Shock and Lightning Strike, just in case. Okay, cool, little cheeky. Got some meandies as well. Thank you. So we're we are wrap. We are going quickly up the meandie scale here for a potential another twelve hour stream. So yeah, just like the other people, little cheeky, please send me your order number. Just send me send that to me in a whisper, and I will let them know. Yeah, it could certainly be Phoenix, which we still have some, you know, shocks and lightning strikes and things like that. Yeah, one speed. I think this Gruul list is doing better than the Deafening Clarion Naya list, honestly. This this one's been, been doing pretty good for us of just being really aggressive and, and attacking uh, often, early and often. Alright, thank you, thank you, little cheeky. Alright, they are a Drake deck. So I can shock and play Ripjaw Raptor, or not shock and play Spellbreaker. They both attack for four. I kind of feel like not shocking. Ripjaw is definitely a lot better card to have out, though, because it doesn't die to Lava Coil. But we already have one Spellbreaker anyway. There you go, Epic. Yeah, the Grill Spellbreaker is giving you the Fanatic of Xenagos feel all over again. Yeah, it is very similar to Fanatic of Xenagos. And that was a fun card. I like Spellbreaker too. Spellbreaker, Spellbreaker is a well-designed card. I think that's a good rare. <laughs> I actually boarded out the Savage Stomp. So we don't have to don't have to worry about drawing the, the Savage Stomp and not having the Rip Child out there. However, if we do draw a land, I do get to play Huntmaster and it also make the Rip Child cost one less and then play Rip Child, Rip Child also. So if we draw a land, we get to play both. Okay, did not draw the land. I mean, maybe better just go Huntmaster, Huntmaster, because then this thing's going to be a two mana, four or five haste next turn. It's still going to have haste. Next turn we'll be able to play Ripjaw, like they will be attacking plus Lightning Strike. Or, of course, we could just play the Carney T. Also, that is true. <laughs> so Spellbreaker feels a little over designed to combat Settle the Wreckage. <clears throat> That's pretty true. The fact that you have Hexproof during your turn is. That is certainly like the most unnecessary part of the card.
Remember how earlier, whenever our opponent had like the three mountains out or whatever, and they just lightning striked our face, and I was like, oh, this is a burn deck, it's not Drake's. Fast forward. Opponent def is definitely Drake's. They're a little bit of a, you know, they're a budget Drake's, of course, here, but they're a Drake deck. Oh, that's got to be a feels bad. We draw two. Uh, tap land, no, I went on tap land. All right, we did not did not get set on tap land. That's all right. We have this game wrapped up pretty easily. And Gruel Dinos is going to be 1 and 0. Oh. I had to get Galta out here. Galta's got to have her time to shine also. Got to get Big Mama Galta, especially with the, the sweet alternate art that we have. Got to play that one. We saw them have one expansion explosion. That's a rare. I think that was the only rare we saw. So turn one, I'm playing root the this land. Turn two, I'm playing commune and getting another land and playing it. Turn three, I'm getting like another land and playing huntmaster. It's not spectacular, but it's not the worst. Like you know, we could mulligan to oblivion. Because, like, this basically is a three-land hand. Yeah, you, d you never you never miss on commune. We could also just draw a land and be able to hunt master. I still I think I'm leaning mulligan, but I don't know. I like this hand. Alright, we're gonna try it. We're gonna draw a land off the top anyway. We're just gonna play Huntmaster on two. <clears throat> Dutch says, sorry I missed most of your stream. I was grinding the arena and I lost track of time halfway through platinum ranked right now. Hey, way to go. That is good for your Merfolk deck. And dude, no reason to be sorry for missing part of the stream. It's all good. Hey, we had another order of, we had another order for a pair of MeUndies here. We are three orders away from a 12 hour stream now. All right, commune, let's get a land. Do I need stomping ground? Might as well take stomping ground. I don't think our Watergrave Demir Guildgate opponent is going to be outracing us.
Hunt Master is one of our best cards. Reducing the cost and giving haste. It is just awesome in our deck. That was a, a big reason why I wanted to keep our, the hand was because of Hunt Master. Hope not ritual of set. <clears throat> so yeah, we've had it. We've had some troubles here with some of these referrals, you know, like going, going through. But if you if you do use, yeah, if you do use them, just send me your order number. Does Miyundi's ship to the UK? I believe so. I guess that'd be. Usually UK is is good on the the different sites. They probably have an FAQ. I don't, if somebody can check for me, or just Google search. I guess I, I would think so, but I, I don't. With them, I'm not exactly sure, honestly. But I would I'd be very shocked if the answer is no. Well, not very shocked. I mean, are there are there even levels of of shockedness? Can you be more or less shocked? I don't know. We'll ask the opponent. How shocked are you right now? Two. They are too shocked. Double Carnival. So there you go. Yes, so they do ship there. Yeah, they're very comfortable. Um, yeah, I'd recommend them. No, my Carnage Tyrant. Oh, well, we got another one. Back up. You better have haste. Okay, good. Yeah, so it's a Grixis deck, suddenly. It's a... Uh... That was a plot twist right there. It was looking like they were just a, a Demir deck, and then suddenly, plot twist, they are Grixis. So I don't want Shocker Strike. I want... I want Spellbreaker. And I think I want Colossus to kill the Flyers. Hmm. This could be a board out Galta matchup. If I'm killing my other creatures, Galta dying to dive down. This is the kind of matchup I would want to board out Galta in. No Cinder Vines. Only boarding in Cinder Vines against hard control decks, not ones with flying creatures that kill you. And against Wilderness Reclamation. Those are the only times to board in Cinder Vines. You don't board it in any, any other time. At least I don't. Could definitely have Coil. That's the other card that I'm thinking of, is Coil. So I have Colossus right now for Bolas. And I have the Stomp. Could certainly have Coil also. That is true. They're a blue-black deck. They're going to be boarding in Thief of Sanity. All blue-black decks board in Thief of Sanity. Bronsonon doesn't do a whole lot for us, and we're bringing in Spellbreakers. Let's try 
taking out one bronze on and one stomp for two coils. Yeah, that was a plot twist there with the Grixis. Man, speaking of plot twists, I mean, as y'all know, I'm a I'm a Texas Rangers fan uh, in baseball. So yesterday, Jason Hamill, he's a pitcher. He made the team. He's a he's an older veteran journeyman. Uh, you know, just kind of was signed to like maybe play in the majors, maybe play in the minors, kind of thing. Uh, but you know, he's an older guy. And he had told him before that if he made, didn't make the team, he wasn't going to be. He was just going to be retiring. Didn't really feel like uh, going to the minors and stuff. And wanted to spend time with the family also. So was kind of wasn't sure if he wanted to play this year. But wanted to see if he could make the major league roster and stuff. So yesterday he makes the major league roster. Today he just retires. <laughs> he decided, no, nah, I guess I didn't really want to. That's I'm good. Don't worry about it. That's pretty funny. They're like, they're like, hey, you made the team, and he's like, cool, I'm going home. See y'all later. Um. There's definitely some joke in there about, you know, would rather retire than pitch for the Rangers. It's got to be. There's definitely a joke in there somewhere. I'm glad we have five removal spells in the deck right now for the bolus that I'm brought in the extra coils also. Attack. More raptors. So they're chilling with like Ritual of Soot, Cry of the Canarium, all that kind of stuff. It's not going to do so well here. Yeah, or or Lava Coils. They're looking at their Lava Coils in disgust. Bzz. Oh, they did have Cast Down. Boom, boom. Well, Double Ripjaw is going to outrace... One at Nicol Bolas. They got rid of one Eldest Reborn somehow. Oh, with Discovery earlier? Yeah. Ah, you called it though. They had another one. So easy sacrifice there. I'd like to draw this land. Oh, yeah. Double haste. We didn't even need double haste. But I like the double haste. Attack! Boom. Alright. Grill Dinos. Getting that dub. Going to the 2 0. Oh. Had some fast games with this one. We had fast games with, with Simic Elves also. Some fast games today. Now, nah, Angrath wasn't really even bad for us previously because Angrath doesn't kill a Ripjaw. Okay. Speaking of Simic Elves, that should be ready to go on YouTube pretty soon now. Ship it. What do y'all think of this hand? 
I mean, on six, it's hard to mulligan three lands, three spells down to five, because five is rough. Couple keeps, couple mulls. Oh, five is rough. I think I want to keep Forest, Forest Mountain, and just kind of go from there. While Scavenger fills our curve, I'd rather look for lands for car you know to try to actually get to the Carnage Tyrants. We're just hoping we're playing against Control. I mean, our best chance of winning is we play against Control and Carnage Tyrant beats our opponent. So that's our best chance of winning this game. Dang it. I was really liking the basic island. I was like, ooh, good, Control. And then... Especially with, like, the weight. And then it's a Storm Tamer. At least, if there are a handful of counter spells, you know, like, if they don't have... If they don't have Tempest Gin, and they're just, like, a handful of counter spells... Carnage, you know, like, Carnage Tyrant can't be countered. Oh, S Salaj, you need two more wins for your third pack of the week? Yeah, make sure you get that, because tomorrow is when it resets. Sundays are when the we can get your weekly pack reset. All right, so, of course, attacking doesn't make a lot of sense into a potential trickster here. Because even though I'd have, like, the lightning strike for the trickster... Sorry. They would be able to uh, counter the lightning strike with their storm tamer. Uh, sorry about that. All right, one more land. This was ex the exact kind of game we wanted to play. Some Drago. All right, might as well just cast this now because we're going to be casting some Carnage Tyrants the next couple turns. It's possible our opponent has to make a choice of whether to counter this or save their counter for the next turn. And, of course, Spell Pierce we don't have to worry about. we got the two mana. All right, that's fine. I'll take that trade. Can't be countered. Uh, I do not know of any site that allows you just to link your vault and then they help you with viable decks. Yeah, the, the Arena Pro app is the best app for Arena Collection stuff that I have been told. I have not used any of them, and I don't, I don't really know anything about the EtherHub website. Alright, so up game. Carnage Tyrant stole it. So we're going to want our Lava Coils, our Colossus... And probably Spellbreaker, too. Those cards are all very good. 
I don't really like Fiery Cannonade because it doesn't kill Siren Storm Tamer. It doesn't kill very much. So, considering we have like some little things also, I'm not going to be bringing in Cannonade. And Cinder Vines for their enchantments, just not, that's not a, something that we are concerned with. We're trying to race here. <clears throat> so, Scavenger and Brontodon don't match up very well. I mean, Scavenger can, because it can be a 4-3. Brontodon does not. 3-4 against, you know, like, temp basically them having Tempest Chance and stuff. I want my creatures to have at least 4 power. Um... So I don't think I want Brontodon, and I don't think I want to sac have Brontodon in there and just sacrifice it to kill the other thing. I want, yeah, I want four power. Besides that, I don't know. I kind of like the rest of these. I just have to cut eight cards. Maybe I don't actually play Spellbreaker, even though Spellbreaker is good in this matchup. Hey, what's up, Salah? Thank you so much for that. That resub and getting that red tie reggie is reggie just kind of always great but i'm gonna take out scavenger huh this is tough I guess I'm taking out Reggie, because it's just the most expensive thing that's easy to counter. But it is kind of always great. Uh, I don't know why I know it's only running and have the cold and everything. Isn't Death Gorge really good in this matchup? It's okay. It's not bad. We're basically just replacing it with, with removal. Is Death Gorge better than Spellbreaker? Possibly. That's that's like the, the main question. I like that Spellbreaker is just, you know, always a 4-4, four, four, but if there's enough spells in the graveyard, you know, Scavenger attacks as a 4-3. Melody and Deep Freeze. True. All right, so if we go to a game three, I'll play Scavenger instead of Spellbreaker. No gin, no gin, no gin. Don't do it. Just no Tempest Gen. Okay, good. Still no Tempest Gen. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right. Yeah, Spellbreaker is better against Trickster. That is very true. Especially how Trickster can make the, the Scavenger back to a 3-2 and trade with it. Wow. We're going to start loading that up with Curious Obsession. 
All right. We just don't have another choice, probably. I guess they just don't have any other creatures in hand. Huh. Post combat. So basically, do I leave the creature back? Or do I just hit him down? Do I just hit him for eight? Put him down to eight. So if I leave Raptor back. They could just have another trickster and tap Raptor. But if they had another trickster and tap Raptor, they could do that right now. I'm going to leave the Raptor back. Oh yeah, I guess this isn't supposed to be a blocking stream. It's supposed to be attack, all attack, all the time. Trade that. Yeah, they get to draw a couple cards, but I'll have the Carnage Tyrant. So obviously we're attacking with both of them next turn. Just don't really want to see Tempest Gen. That's the car that can kill us. Looks like they're debating whether to trickster or not, most likely here. Alright, so they have a trickster and a counter spell. No, don't block that one. That one has trample. I guess you don't want me to draw a card. Just saved one life. And that should hopefully do it. They can just send in the trickster. The 2-2, two -two, so that their Curious Obsessions don't fall off. So they can keep the 4-4 four -four back to block. So like they're, they can have their 4-4 four -four to block the Spellbreaker. But there we go. All right, 3-0 for the Dinos. Even though the worst-case scenario happened with them having the Trickster to tap my Ripjaw after not attacking. So Carnage Tyrant, very good against Mono Blue. Especially when they have a very slow hand, which they had very slow hands both of those times. We had a couple Carnage Tyrants. And that's that. One week until War of the Spark spoilers already next week. Or like, I guess not this upcoming week, but the following week. Hey, Madman. Uh, okay, they're gonna start them at packs. Gotcha. 
Well, I'll take the one that we can. Electromancer. Put a phoenix in the yard. Yeah, but don't get it back. No, don't get it back. Don't get it back. Nice. Love it. Rawr, 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 rawr. My opponent's like, what? I'm playing against the one dude that's playing Death Gorge Scavenger. What is this? And I'm like, sure am. I'll exile that, thank you. Dilt. Yeah. Crypto's pretty good here for my mono green dino deck. We know the bottom four cards are not red sources either. <laughs> so there's red sources somewhere in here. But yeah, we can we could stomp the Stomp the Drake as long as the Drake's not too big. I'd like to kill my Ripjaw also. No more spells. Hmm. Let's do this first. Wow. There are no red sources. I honestly don't think I can attack. So I could put them down to 15, but them attacking back for 5 is like a is a really big number. I don't think I can let them have a two-turn clock. Right now it's four with the Phoenix. I don't think we're going to have another Drover. I know because we put two Drovers down to the bottom. No, we're just... We're just... We're just dead. Yeah, it's... This is... Our, well, Joy, this is like the third or fourth time that you've donated for this deck, and it's... This whole only green mana thing has never happened to us before either. This is the first. All right, so we need coils for Phoenix, cannonade for Phoenix. And their Krabby Tutu. Colossus for Drake and for Phoenix. Alright. What else are we what are we sideboarding out? Is question number one. Question number two, do I actually want all this removal? Nope, never bring in these cinder, cinder vines. Uh Bronsodon can certainly go. Dice the lava coil. Doesn't die to shock though. I could see trimming on like some of like the mana creatures with them playing a bunch of shocks. Could see that being a thing, but it's gonna be hard to, to cast like these other things. If we do that. And I don't know if this is too much removal. Like I don't know if I actually want fiery cannonades, honestly. I probably don't want fiery cannonade. So this is 64. Correct. Cinder Vines is for Nexus and Esper. Cut Strike. Strike kills the... Kills their 2-2, their, their Electromancer, though. Like, having removal for that Electromancer is going to be important. I guess if we're, we're just, just going to race... 
Yeah, I could see us racing. All right. Think about that last game that we just played, BS Fig. What would Cinder Vines have done that last game? How, how would, like, think if we had a Cinder Vines in our hand, that last game we just played, how, and, you know, we had the red mana to cast it, and we could have cast it on turn two or any turn. It would have had zero text on it that helped us at all. It would have just, would have just been in a dead card. Would not have done a single thing. So, sorry, we're not playing it. Let's grab this other stomping ground. I want an untap land. Leading, of course, with Huntmaster so we can be attacking with Ripjaw next turn. All right, hoping to find some more dinos. Our commune didn't see any dinos. There's one phoenix. Yep, this is AFI Miss Murder. Yeah, they... If we had Cinder Vines on turn two last game, it would have dealt five damage. And so they would have gone from from 20 to 15 while we were dead. So they could have been at 15. So not doing very much. So Hummaster can give Registor Alpha haste next turn. Maybe it's better to play Scavenger. Scavenger's a 5-4 attacking. It does let us get Drover and play also. It's actually probably better just playing Scavenger. Then we'll also have another 3-3 in play as well. So next turn we'll have a 4-5, a 4-4, a 3-3, and another 3-3 all attacking. If they just play another Crackling Drake, they'll be dead. Right? 4-4. Four, four. I guess... No, I guess they're not dead. Ooh, never mind, they're dead. They dead. I would have just played the alpha, they could have gone to one, basically. They could have kept their Drake alive and gone to one. If we didn't top deck that. They would have chumped block with the two two. Um They could have like chump blocked on the Registor Alpha with the two two and kill a three three, like kill the Drover with the uh crackling Drake. Oh, I kinda like these lightning strikes killing their stupid two twos. 
Those two twos are rough. Yes, we have shock. I think strike may be better than stomp. Yeah, I want to strike over the stomp. Yeah, that's Galta is just always like a win. If you you give Galta haste, like you're not losing. <laughs> just Galta always kills people. No, have not kicked uh, territorial Al Allosaurus very much. No. Uh, Death Gorge Scavenger, part of the text says whenever it exiles a non-creature spell from the graveyard, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So we exiled one with the ETB effect that turned it into a 4-3, and then whenever it attacked, it got to trigger again and exiled another one with the attacks, turned it into a 5-4. Oh, that's a mulligan. All right, we were mono green dinos. Game one. Hopefully we're not mono red dinos. Hopefully we draw a green source. Stop always having that card. Nice. And there's Huntmaster is not necessarily doing anything the next turn, but Goblin Electromancer is certainly doing stuff. I definitely like getting that out of there. Man, all the Huntmasters. Set one at the bottom. Tilt. Yeah, we've had some bad mana luck here, and our opponent has not their games at all. Our opponents had Electromancer on turn two and then Charter courses to put Phoenixes in the in the graveyard on turn three. Every one of these three games. I'm not gonna be able to do anything about this Phoenix. Drawing the shock for the Electromancer was so good, but then they had another Electromancer that killed us. And also the two Phoenixes, of course. Sure, have that too. Why not? No! Q. There goes a lava coil. Dang. All right, three and one. Took an incredible Phoenix hand. Keep our dinos down. Alright, I like it. Oh, our opponent goes first. I don't like it. I want to go first. It's a great hand on the play.
Ooh, I like that island. That's a cool island. I mean, it's just buildings. It's not really an island. It is. It's a blue city. Yeah, it does not look like an island, but... Taking the scavenger. Interesting. So do they have a ritual of Sith that's just gonna kill my hot masters? Cry of the Carnarium? I don't think there's a I don't think I should just not play the other hunt master. I can hold this mountain in case of another campaign. If they play another campaign, they're like dead, right? Seven, eight, nine. Do I even care if they play another campaign? No. I don't care if they play a campaign. The reason to play this mountain is because if we draw another mountain, we'll be able to cast the Red Star Alpha even if they have a sweeper. So they're going to take Alpha either way. I'm glad we played the Mountain. Because if they replay that campaign, they don't just get the Mountain for free. Oh, they're at two life? That's shocking. Going to game two. Good draw there. Good job, Shock. We'll go ahead and take you out. And we'll take you out. And we'll bring you in. And I guess they are probably playing... Let's get some of these lightning strikes back in. Because they're probably playing Thief of Sanity. Every single blue-black deck after sideboard has Thief of Sanity. Plus strikes can still go upstairs, or it can kill. I like I like strike more than uh, collision colossus, even though colossus can be like a four four damage upstairs, because I like how strike can kill hostage shaker as well. They could have like doom whisper, or, or which would which would be like the reason to play collision. But I think I'm kind of over it. Over Doom Whisper. No, this is not a Cindervines deck. Cool, Joey. That's, yep, that's what I was thinking too. Taking out Kalta and just having the strikes in here. No, you don't need Nullhide Ferox. Just don't need it. We got Spellbreakers instead. Spellbreaker good. The whole you can't play non-creature spells clause does hurt at times. Cinder Vines is for Wilderness Reclamation decks. And then also Esper Control. That's why I'm bringing it in. This is not either of those. If we play through like a long game here and they have like no creatures, so they if we basically see like you know no Doom Whisper, no nothing like that, uh, then I'll consider bringing it in. They have nothing for us to lightning strike. Scavenger or Spellbreaker better?
I think I'd rather the Spellbreaker get countered. So I went with Spellbreaker. I'd rather save Scavenger. <laughs> okay. Thanks, King Toll. Have a wonderful night as well. So yeah, no stream tomorrow. I'll be doing a fancy baseball draft. And then also just running errands and stuff and take, taking care of other things I need to. But then we're doing the 12 hour stream on Monday. We're getting to that 2000 YouTube subscriber mark. I'm gonna wait on Memorial to Unity. Because they're a Thought Erasure deck. And keeping the forest because I'm gonna I'm gonna have Memorial to Unity is gonna get Carnage Tyrant, and then I'm gonna need six mana for my Carnage Tyrant. Man, yeah, that's just plain rude. That's just plain rude. Uh so they're gonna they want a Thought Erasure, my Carnage Tyrant. Ha! Huh. Joke's on you, opponent. The Carnage Tyrant was the sixth card. Dang it. I wasn't there. Well, at least we threw four lands to the bottom. Wow, this is a flood. Our deck doesn't have very many lands in it. It really doesn't. We have 23 lands. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we know four at the bottom. So that's nine, 10, 11, and 12. And we have this one over here. So that's 13. So there's 10 lands left in the next 40 cards. So we have a 25% chance to draw a land for the next 40 cards. 10 out of 40. Huh. That makes sense. We're going to take six here. The Twilight Prophet's going to finish us off in the air. We don't have anything to draw that can... Take care of both of those. All right, so they did not seem to be a Thief of Sanity deck. So since they don't, I mean, I guess they could still be a Thief of Sanity deck. I think I am going to play some Cinder Vines here. Because it does not seem like they have many if any creatures and we'll have a coil for like that two four and that's the other thing we saw multiple eldest reborns that's an enchantment we want to blow up we saw a disinformation campaign they probably have search Canta. it does look like they're pretty enchantment heavy and so cinder vines gets to get rid of that eldest reborn not let them take my carnage tyrant they, they thought erasure away so no red in hand yet, but commune with dinosaurs finds red source. Thank you. I don't really have anything to ramp into. Let's get the center vines on the battlefield. Start pinging away. No thought erasure from them.
remember when we kept our two lander a little bit ago? And I was like, oh, we need this commune to find us a land. Maybe we didn't need that commune to find us a land. There we go. I was going to check to see what we had over here if we had a Carnage Tyrant. And we did. Tyrant! We were saving that. Last last game we were talking about how we were going to draw the Carnage Tyrant. We were saving it. <laughs> so they're contempting here probably because they have Eldritch Born. Dang it. But at least we have the Cinder Vines to blow up the Eldritch Born this time. And might as well just do it right now so they don't make us discard this mountain, I suppose. Protection tower. Wow. So that's eight lands. We know we have two down there, so that's twelve. Or sorry, that's so that's ten. So that's ten. So we have thirteen lands left now. Again, almost all almost halfway through our lands again. Elvish Reborn has done a number on us. This game. This match. So they have eight permanents right now. Even another permanent, they're not going to be able to uh, unlock the profit. If they attack with Carnage Tyrant, I think I just double block to try to keep them one less permanent. Alright, and the campaign turns on profit. Profit's gonna hurt. Three. Cry of the Carnarium. Hey, skinny fat man. Have a good night. <laughs> I have a 70 land Voltani EDH deck that misses more land drops than this. That's pretty good. This is kind of the problem with cutting all the planeswalkers, though. Is without having the planeswalkers, these kind of games can happen. We can just flood and, and we don't have card advantage in the deck to help out. Against these control decks that are killing our things. Without Planeswalkers, our deck is definitely worse against control decks. It's just undeniable there. No, we wouldn't want a Mortal Sun in a deck like this of how it just... That, that card's just going to cost too much. Yeah, like the 6 mana. It's pretty hard to hit 6 land drops in a 23 land deck consistently. We have, like, the Carnage Tyrants, of course, that we get to reduce the cost uh, of them, but with the Hunt Masters, the Otepic Hunt Masters. All right, so we got our 20 gems, got our 3-2. I thought we were going to be winning that after the first game, but games two and three... Our deck had other things in mind 
there. Still nothing wrong with the 3 2. So our, we made a couple of changes from the last time, you know, like with our, our donation deck here, and, and I don't think I liked them. So, you know, we put in two Brontodons instead of two Domri. Brontodon didn't seem very necessary or impressive. I don't I don't know if we ever really drew it or it did too much. Because it did like the very first game of the league. I think we had a Brontodon killing an opponent in that one. And then, you know, we cut our Vivians from the sideboard for the coil, for a third coil and fourth Spellbreaker. Overall, Spellbreaker was very good. And it was it was good in a lot of matchups when we were bringing it in. Uh, the three mana 4-4 four, four was, was pretty good for us. Uh, but, you know, we missed, you know, we played that one control deck and definitely missed having the Planeswalkers there. So, I think I, think I would like to, like, so question here is what would you change anything about the deck? I think I would probably go back to doing having the two like so basically the we've played this deck a few times now thanks to Joy this is Joy's deck and the previous times we've played it uh basically the those changes I was just saying Domri instead of Brontodon I liked Domri more and um but I could I could see just playing Vivian instead of Domri also though. But Domri's kind of nice of, of another way to give these things haste and another way to hit hit your land drops to Carnage Tyrants. Uh, we'd won a couple of games before because of Domri. And did miss my Vivians in the sideboard. Definitely really like Vivians. Vivians are good against even Drakes and everything like that. We don't have, like, 26 is about as low as creature count you kind of want with Domri. But it worked out. The Domri's were working out for us before with the deck. But yeah, if you want to see if you want to see that uh, how it was before in action, do have the replays on the YouTube channel. You can uh, check it out there. YouTube.com slash ToddStevensMTG. That's where you can, if you want to, kind of scroll down and see some other videos of us playing the Gruul Dinosaur deck before. You know, check it out there. Um, now, Lightning Strikes are good. You're like, our deck is very aggressive. Like, this is a very aggressive deck where the damage that Lightning Strike and Shocks do definitely kill opponents. So... That is true. Haste Harpooner is like that is true. Harpooner with Domri, how Domri can give it haste and then it it gets really big. I guess that could be a thing. Wayward Swordtooth be playable? Not really. No, you need a, for Wayward Swordtooth to be good. You need to have a lot of lands and like a lot of ways to like draw extra, like basically keep drawing extra lands in your hand for you want to be playing Wayward Swordtooth if. You know, like that clause of playing multiple lands a turn has to be pretty good because it is hard to get to 10 permanents. So, no, I wouldn't put Wayward Swordtooth in a deck like this. You would need it with, like, Experimental Frenzy kind of thing. There's a Thrashing Help, Drover, Stomping Ground, Galta with Haste, with Reggie, with has Haste with Huntmaster. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you need to play the Brontodons to, just to help the one Galta... Honestly, don't think you need that there. But and yeah, Savage Stomp also one of. I don't know. To be fair, that was just one. The other thing about about the, what I'm saying, that was just us playing one match against the control deck there. You know, we only played one match, and you know, like Joyce played the deck a, a whole lot more. And you know, like that was just you know, on the far end of the spectrum of what can happen against control of how we just drew so many lands games two and three. You know, like that's a, a very low percentage chance for those games to happen like that. So. 
you know, it's a really small sample size <laughs> of playing against control decks. Very small sample size and very um, far on the spectrum of what can happen. So that's another thing to keep in mind when thinking about making any changes to the deck. So there we go. Uh, if you are watching this video later on on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.